this is uh, part two of the Maimed Anila Deidi from Reish Chedesh Elul Tovshin Lamed Beit. In the first class, we did a lot of talking and very little reading. We read only the beginning and the end, the first page and the last page of the Maimed. And we discussed the Mashal of Melach Basada with some detail. I guess the most uh, notable detail of the class was the idea that this marshal of Malach Basada, which in Lukut Teira limits the king to coming to the field, there's actually a maimer from the Alter Rebbe himself, someplace else, where he talks about the king coming to the desert as well and the, the connotation, the, the meaning of that. The Chiddush of the maimer is that in the marshal of Melech Basada, one of the most important parts is that Yetzim an she'ha'ir l'kabel p'nei That when you talk about the king in the field, and the king greets the people, and he has a beautiful face, and he smiles and laughs to them, and so forth, before any of that occurs, the people have to go out and greet the king. Yetzim l'kabel p'nei And um, on the first page of the Maimed, On the second page of the Maimed, in footnote 11, the Rebbe quotes the previous Rebbe, who says that Yeitzim an sheheir lekabah pnei Amelach basode is leeder des hagabola zel machashamayim. That before the king is able to show his love as a Melach basode, there is the fact that people go out to greet the king, and the fact that people are, able to, are going out to greet the king. Um, is the idea of Yira, Bittl, Kabbalah Sel. Now, you'll see later in the Maimed, it's on page Reish Samach Vov, Siv Hei, that the Rebbe is going to bring an expression. It's interesting because there's no mocker for it here, but I believe the mocker for it is a Zoyer. Um, that the Seder is the Chilu, the Chimu, the Chimu, the Chilu. That there's four levels. There's Yira Tato and Ahava Zuto and Ahava Rabba and Yira Yila. And the Rebbe is going to say that the Yira Tato is the fact that the people go out to greet the king. The Ahava Zuto is that the Melech is Makabu Kulam B'Seva Ponam Yafes. The Ahava Rabba is that Mara Ponam Sheikh Akish Lakulam. And the Yira Yila, this is the Avoid of Rosh Hashanah. That's how the Rebbe is going to explain it. Um. What is the Nakuda of this Maimed? What's the point of this entire Maimed? The point of this entire Maimed is that there's something very, very deep about Bittl, Yira, Bittl, Yira. And the people going out to the field to greet the king, this is a Bittl. And the Rebbe taught us in the last class that Bittl is the most complete way a person can be involved with Hashem when they surrender, like a slave, a servant, who surrenders to his master, that in that complete surrender he becomes an extension of his master. He's more one with his master than through any other form, any other means of relating. And therefore the bittle of the people to go out to the, to the field and greet the king has something in it which makes it completely transcendent. The Rebbe explains that even the Vedoy Dili of the Yom Neroim, of the Seres Yemei Tshuva, is connected to Elul, and Elul Dei Divdei Dili Rashi Elul, because of this principle, that the fact that the people are going out to greet the king in the field has a quality of Bittl, and this quality of Bittl um, connects the people to the king in a way that is deeper than anything which is going to come later, including the most profound and deep involvements that could be between subjects and the king, which are going to happen later on in the palace, and Rosh Hashanah, and Yeri Elo, and so on. So in the last class, we learned the Maimir. You know, I tell this to you on occasion, that the, in the letter, the Kuntres, from the previous Rebbe, Lima Da Chassidus, Darkia Chassidus, where he tells the story of Rebbe Kusia Lepler at length, the story of Kusia Lepler. So when the Kusia Lepler used to go to the Alter Rebbe, he understood the Maimorim. When it came to the Mittal Rebbe, he didn't understand, and he complained to the Mittal Rebbe. The Mittal Rebbe told him, Ein loch tovar eimer b'fnei 
So what he told the Mitle Rebbe, the expression was, the Maimir Rabbech Vashtanin, the Bi Rabbech Nitzvashtan. I understood the Maimir, I didn't understand the Bi. This is the language of Chassidim from the olden days. Because by the Alter Rebbe, in the Kutateira, you have two things, you have a Maimir and a Bi. Um, the later Rabbeim incorporated the Bi into the Maimir. What I just said is not entirely true, but it's a perspective at least. So the last class, we learned the Maimir. We learned Anil Dei Di Videi Dili. We had two questions, Anil Dei Videi Dili, and we learned the answers. Today we're going to learn the Biyur. And the Biyur is about the Yira in general, and Yira Tata, and Bittal Hayesh in particular. That's what this is going to be about. We're holding Peter Gimel, and we actually learned a, a relatively small part of the Maimir last time, just the beginning and the end, the first page and the last page. But that was the Maimir, the Maimir, the Pshat of the Apostle Anila Deidi. We learned the last time. And again, like I said to you, the, the Chiddush of this Maimir is that one of the most critical parts of the Melech Basad the Mashal is the people going out to greet the king, and that's the Yid and Bittal, which sets the whole uh, sequence of events in motion. Now we're going to learn the Biur, and the Biur is about Yid and Bittal. So let me start with the following it's brought down that. There are a number of people whose names are repeated twice in succession, one after the next. Like Noyach Noyach, Avram Avram, Yankiv Yankiv, Moshe Moshe. And of course, you also have uh, Hashem Hashem. And um, there's a rule that whenever someone's name is mentioned twice, it's Psik time. Noyach, Psik, stop, Noyach, Avram, Psik. Avram Yanke, Psik Yanke. The exception is Moshe Moshe. By Havaya Havaya, there's also a Psik, but it says in Samach Vav in Usfartem that the Psik of Havaya Havaya is the same as the non Psik by Moshe Moshe. What does that mean? That Pasuk time of Begave, when you have two, when Hashem mentions the name of a person twice, one after the next, there's a pause between the two mentions. It means the following. In Pshutta Shalmik, in Rashi, in Chumash Rashi, when an individual, a human being, is mentioned in Teresh Baksav, in Tchumish, Tanakh, and his name is repeated twice. So Rashi says, Lashon Chiba. This is an expression of affection. It's a sign of endearment. Somebody that you love, you say his name twice. Avram, Avram is Lashon Chiba, Yankiv, Yankiv is Lashon Chiba, and so on. But of course, that's only Pshat. It's Pshut Eshel Mikra. There is, there must be, and there is, deeper ideas. And the deeper idea of Avram 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 and Neich Neich and Yankiv Yankiv is like you have in the Gersakei Yashim and Tezvav, which we happen to be learning in these days in Elam, where it says Venechi Yafar Veifer, right? Avram Avinu says Venechi Yafar Veifer. And the Rebbe says at length that he heard from his Rebbe, from the Mezitcher Magid, what's the Pshat Venechi Yafar Veifer? It is two Avrahams. There's two Avrahams. There's Avram in Atzilus, and there's Avram down here. And the relativism, the relative similarity between Avram and Atzilus and Avram down here is like the, the, the relativism between a little pile of ash and the original piece of wood from which that, that ash was cold after the foot wood was burned. And the al of course, points out that even though when you have a piece of wood, almost all of it is, is, is offer, is ash, is carbon, Nevertheless, when you take out the Aish and the Mayim and the Ruach, what's left is a trace, is a, a very, very small percentage in terms of volume of what it was originally. And the Nimshal is that you cannot compare the Chesed of Avram as it is in Atzilus to the Chesed of Avram as it is in Asiyah. In other words, Kabbalistically, Api Kabbalah, when a name of a person is said twice, it's because this person exists on two levels. There's Avram and Atzilus and Avram and Asiyah. And there's psik time with the separation between the first Avraham and the second Avraham because you can't compare them at all. Avraham and Atzilus is so, the chesed of Avraham and Atzilus is so much higher than the chesed of Avraham down here, even though Avraham down here was also chesed of Atzilus. Avraham Avinu was the Medrash said, it says in the Sefer Abohir, Omer Midas Achas Lafnei HaKadosh Baruch, that Miyei Miyei is Avraham Avinu al It says in, in, in a Sefer, uh, which is called. Um, Sefer Aboyer, which is written by the Chunyi Ben Akona, 
that Midas Achesed set the Akadosh Baruch from the time Avram Avinu finds it, finds himself on the earth. I am out of a job because Avram is Amy the Meshamesh Bem Koimi. Avram is doing Chesed in my place. It's such a medrash. Nevertheless, the Avram, the Chesed of Avram and Atzilus cannot be compared to the Chesed of Avram and Asiya, even though Avram down here was in the Shama of the Atzilus. And the same is true of Neich Neich, and the same is true of Yankiv Yankiv. But by Moshe, Moshe, like I mentioned before, it says in the Osfartim, in Samach Vov, that Moshe is a different level because the two Moshe's are not Atzilus. And Asiya, the two Moshe's are Ainsaf and Atzilus. And between Ainsaf and Atzilus, there's no Psik. It's another discussion. And the same is true, Havaya, Havaya, even though there is Psik time, it's a whole other thing. But the point is that Api Kabbalah, when someone's name is mentioned twice, is to indicate, it's to denote that there are two levels of that Inyan, that person. Avraham and Atzilos, then Avraham and Asiyah, that even though Avraham and Asiyah is also incredibly great in Midas HaChesed, it cannot be compared to that same Midas as it is in Atzilos. Which leads to the question and to the point. How come there is no Yitzchak Yitzchak? Avraham's name is mentioned twice, Yankov's name is mentioned twice, always with a psik. How come there's no Yitzchak Yitzchak? Now, of course, the, the way you would ask the question, if this was a Ben Chobosh Lamikra class, Hashem doesn't love him. Right, if Losh and Chiba are a repetitious allusion to a person, Avram, Avram, Yankov, Yankov, Noyach, Noyach, means he loves him. Hashem doesn't love Yitzchak, they should mention his name twice. And of course, Apisod, the Apikabo, the question is just like there is two Avrahams, there's two Chesed, there's two Yankov, there's two Racham, there's two Teferes, why is it not two Yitzchak, two Gvura? And the answer that's brought is the following you have this in Chesidus. And it's, it's, it's not as simple as I'm making it, but I'm going to make it simple nevertheless. That there's a basic difference between Midas HaChesed and Midas HaGavura, between Ahava and Yireh. You have in Tanya the idea that Yesh Misha Oyev. The basis for love is Yesh. When one loves another, even if the other that they love is Hashem, the foundation for, and the basis for that love is self. Yesh Misha Oyev. Like people like to say, in order for me to love you, I have to love me first. Yesh Mishayev. The basis for loving HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a person's own self-identity. Yesh Mishayev. Any human being who has a relationship with Hashem, even if he's the biggest tzaddik, if the relationship begins with Yesh, there's going to be a difference between the Oyev on a higher level and the Oyev on a lower level. In other words, if my relationship with the Ebishter has to do with my self-identity, the various different levels of my involvement are going to be truly distinctive, different. But Yireh is different. And this is Tanya Perek Mamalaf, the way I understand it, chapter 41 in Tanya, that the foundation and the basis for Yira is not Yesh, it's Bithel. The real difference between loving Hashem and fearing Hashem isn't the form of the emotion, which means I desire him or I don't want to be separated from him. I like him or I'm afraid he shouldn't hurt me. The real difference between Ava and Yira is that the base of love is self and that the base of Yira is selfless, is not self. The base, the essence of fear, is an underlying bitl. So it says in Hasidus that because at the essence of Ava is Yesh, there's a difference between one kind of love and a different kind of love, and that's why you have Avram Avram, and Yankov Yankov, and Neyach Neyach. Why is there no Yitzchak Yitzchak? Because Yitzchak is Yireh. And all Yireh have a constant. There is something from the lowest level of Yireh to the highest level of Yireh. I have this vague recollection, there's actually a Lushan from a Chazal to this effect, that all Yireh have a constant from the lowest level of fear, which is I'm afraid of being punished the deepest and most profound level of fear which is a sense of the awe of Hashem since at the base at the essence of Yid is not Yesh but at the base and the essence of Yid is Bittl Bittl is one so this is how it's explained why you have an Avram Avram and Chumash you have a Yankov Yankov and Chumash and there's no Yitzchak Yitzchak because by Yitzchak there's no two levels there is Yid law, there is Yid Tata and our Maim is going to make that case but because underneath the different Yiddish, there is a foundation of Bittl, and Bittl is always the same, because Bittl means it's not about me, it's about my Hashem. Like a slave 
who is the property of his master, and the will of his master is his will, the joy of his master is his joy, he becomes almost an extension of his master. And of course, in one's relationship with Hashem, that relationship of servitude and him being the master is actually ideal, it's a good thing. So since at the base of all Yira is this submission, this bittel, so there's really no difference between the highest Yira and the lowest Yira, and that's why there's no Yitzchak Yitzchak. This is an idea which is brought in Chesidus to explain the difference between Midas Avraham, we have Avraham Avraham, Midas Yankiv, we have Yankiv Yankiv, and Midas Yitzchak, where there is no Yitzchak Yitzchak. So just to repeat, the base of Ahava is Yesh, and therefore there's a real difference between one Ahava and another Ahava. The base of Yira is Bittel, and because the base of Yira is Bittel, there's no real difference between one Yira and another Yira. This is what says in other places. Now, we learn our Maimir. What our Maimir is going to say is this. Even though it's true that at the base of Yira is Bittel, and because at the base of Yira is Bittel, all Yiras are the same, there's still a difference between Yira Tata and Yira Yilah, between the lower Yira and the higher Yira, and actually there is an advantage in the lower Yira over the higher Yira. Because although every Yira is motivated by Bittal, some Yiras are inspired by a light that comes from above. In other words, a light comes from above which elicits, which calls out the Yira and the Bittal from the person. And some Yiras come entirely from the person. And the Rebbe is going to argue that a Yidu which comes entirely from the person has an advantage of Bittl over the Yidu, which is also at its base, Bittl, which is inspired from HaKadosh Baruch In other words, in, in a sentence, the Rebbe is going to argue that Yidu Tata is higher than Yidu Ela. That Bittl Ayesh has a mile of Bittl Atzmi. Very simple. And the reason is because Yidu Ela and the... And the higher levels of Yira have an enlightenment, have a richness. And Yira Tata is entirely the person submitting. And there is nothing more genuine than a human being's submission without the support and the assistance which comes from heaven. That's what we're going to be learning. And of course, this Biur, the Kamerte which we're learning tonight, is the explanation for the way we learned the Pshat Nahila in the in the previous class. But now we're going to learn, like I said before, the Biur of the Maimir of Anila Daidi. And the point is going to be to argue the advantage of Yireh Tata over Yireh Ilah. Let's read. Sif Gimel. Ubiur ha'inyin beprat This that I, says the Rebbe, told you before, that there's a big chiddish in the marshal of Melech Basada that has to be pointed out, which is that one of the components of the Melech Basada phenomena or event is not the king coming to the field, but the people going to greet him. And then the people going to greet him, there's a yira, there's a bittel, and a kabbalah sale, which as the Rebbe said in the Maimed, goes till Atzmus, needs further explaining. So the Rebbe, the Rebbe now refers to a Maimed from the Tzemach Tzedek in footnote 14. He tells you exactly where it is. The name of the Maimed is Inyan Tkiya Shefer B'Reish Chedesh The idea of blowing Shefer and Reish Chedesh and of course the Rebbe observes why is it Semach Tzedek Medak Tek Dafke Resh Chedesh? I'm going to speak out of turn. I, I was thinking out loud. I am thinking out loud that perhaps the reason the Rebbe is mentioning Resh Chedesh Shalom specifically is connected to the Rebbe Sicha about the first day of Resh Chedesh Shalom and taking the Islamic. But I'm just throwing that out for, for fun. So the Maimed that we're now going to be learning is going on the Tzemach, not on the Lekut Teda, Melech Basada, the piece before, but on the Tzemach Tzedek. As the Rebbe Shemavayer in Yentkiya Shefer Bereish Chay Deshalol, the Tzemach Tzedek explains the significance of blowing Shefer on Reish Chay Deshalol under the entire month. And he says, "The Zeh should take in B'Shefer B'Chay Deshalol during the month of El. We blow Shefer, and of course, we also blow Shefer Rosh Hashanah." Says the Rebbe, "Who Hagdama Litkiya Shefer the Reish Hashanah? The Shefer in El sets up as a prelude, as an introduction to the blowing Shefer Rosh Hashanah." And it continues, the hachi look bent ki as shefer the elo, or ki as shefer the reish hashana, who the difference between the shefer and elo. And the shefer of rosh hashana is as follows: shahayir of the awe and the trepidation, the trembling. 
Abo, I did Kira Shafer the Elo, which happens to belong Shafer and Elo, is called Yirat Atta, it's a lower fear. Vahayir of Aharo, the Abo, I did Kira Shafer the Resha Shono, the fear and the trepidation which comes to belong Rasha Shono, Shafer is Yirat Elo, is a higher fear. But the difference between Yirat Atta and Yirat Elo is huge. Yirat Atta means I submit. I accept Hashem as my king and I submit. Yiri law is standing in front of the king. The person experiences consciously standing in front of the king. He becomes so overwhelmed by the king's presence, he becomes an extension of the king. So in a strange way, Yiri law is quiet as opposed to Avaraba. But the quiescence is a symptom of being totally one with the king. So in a way, Yiri Tata and Yiri law are exactly the same. Yiri Tata means one submits to the king completely, so they become an extension of the king. And Yiri Elah is one is in the presence of the king completely, so they become an extension of the king by feeling the king. But the difference is that in Yiri Tata there's no feeling, there's only a submission. And in Yiri Elah there's an enormous amount of feeling. And of course the Rebbe is going to argue the advantage of Yiri Tata over Yiri Elah, as you'll see. Says the Rebbe, So this is the first reason why it was determined. By meaning, you saw Teiri to blow Shaif in the month of El, Ubechol Achedish during this entire month, Kibachtei, Lovel Yiri Elah, because since Rosh Hashanah we have to come to Yiri Elah, the only way to get there is Tarakli is Tchila Yiri Tata. You can't come to the higher fear, which is Avda Kami Mora, standing in front of the king, without first having the lower fear, which is submitting to the king. So, this is the first explanation of Pichasidis for why in El we blow Shaif, it sets up the Shaif in Rosh Hashanah. And then the Rebbe continues, There's another reason why we blow Shefer and Elul to set up the Tkiyas of Rosh Hashanah. We blow Shefer during the month of Elul, Kedem Rosh Hashanah, before Rosh Hashanah, for a different reason. Who? The reason is as follows. During 10 days of Tshuva, beginning with Rosh Hashanah, you have to bring down a light which is called Makif, in other words, Ein Seif, which is higher than Ishtal Shalus, to fill up, to compensate, to correct whatever we blemish during the whole year. In other words, all year long we do Teir and Mitzvahs. And Teir and Mitzvahs is Atzilus, it is Bekele. The Pogamim that we have, the blemishes that we have by the Mitzvahs that we failed to do, or Chas Shalom, the Averis that we did, have to be repaired from higher than Atzilus. And that's called Er Makif Mesapi Eniachitzeinim or Er Makif as Memali or the Chesreinus. So you have to bring down an Ein Safe, which is called an Er Makif, to heal the mistakes or the deficiencies from the previous year. Says the Rebbe, Vamshach Hasam Makif. In order to bring down the Makif, it's idea Bittel Dafke, it has to be Bittel. And Dafke, the Bittel, the Shafer and Elo has the Milo Bittel. Okavu Abateir, it's explained in Chesiris Allah Pazik, it says in the Pasuk, the heaven is my seat and the earth is my footstool and you'll see in a moment that the heaven is my seat is Teira the earth is my footstool is Mitzvah but then it says what is the home that I will live in I will look to this to someone who is poor and of a broken spirit so the Rebbe teaches heaven and earth is Teira Mitzvah heaven and earth is Teira Mitzvah Says the Rebbe Amshacha, try the Teira Mitzvahs. Well, we bring down not only through Mitzvahs, but also through Teira. Teira Mitzvahs, Yiddishkeit as a whole, brings on the Eir Pnimi, a light which is revealed, a light which comes into the vessel in a direct way. Kisei v'hadei meragle. The seat would be the Teira, the footstool would be the Mitzvahs, and they bring down Eir Bekeinim and Atzilus. Laskana l'azad eshmei l'shem yechbet shem yechshin tein zon. Obachtei l'amshicha makifim. But one wants to bring down a light which is higher than an Erepnimi, higher than the light of mitzvahs, and higher than the light of Teda. For this you have to have a bias. Bias, a home goes on makif, right? Higher than a chair and a footstool is a home. And bias to makif. Ub makif um atzva, makif arachik. Bias is not an ordinary makif, it's a makif arachik, as opposed to a begit, which is a makif akarit. So it's Reb Hoi Dehabitl. Teda and mitzvahs. Bring down the Er Pnimi, and they don't require Bittel per se, they require learning Tate and doing Mitzvahs. The Er Makif requires Bittel. In the words of the Pasuk, Onni, Unechei Ruach, Vechored al Davari, one who is poor and of a broken spirit, and who trembles to the words of a Kodesh Baruch. So that Samach Tzedek says, Valachain, this is the second reason why. Take him, 
בשפר באלו, we blow שפר in אלו, כי בכדי שתהיה המשוכס המקי בראש השון, if on ראש השון we want to reveal a light of אין סייב, which is called מקיף, to heal the פגמים, the deficiencies in the year before, one must have a broken spirit and be trembling. And the shoifer of Elo brings us to this chadad. So in Elo we blow shoifer, says the Tzemach Tzedek, for two reasons. A, Yire Tato brings Yire Elah. B, Bittl brings an Ermakif. Okay, now I just want to add, you'll see this in the moment momentarily, that uh, another point of difference between the shoifer of Elo and the Shefer of Reish Hashanah is that the Shefer of El is not a mitzvah. It's a mini Yisrael. It's almost like we're doing it as volunteers. And the Shefer of Hashanah is a mitzvah. And as you'll see later, this being a volunteer and blowing Shefer also has the advantage of Bittal over a mitzvah of Eish. So the Rebbe says in the bottom of page, the question is, Rosh Hashanah, we also blow Shefer. And Shefer always brings to Charod. Shefer always brings to trembling, to trepidation. I talk a shefer beir v'am leyacher. Other the nature of the sound of the shefer is that it elicits trembling and fear in a person. So why do you have to have the shefer of Elul? Let the shefer Rosh Hashanah itself affect what is necessary to bring on the ermakif and so forth. For other Rabbi, to be sure, hacharod the Rosh Hashanah gedel yisa meacharod the Elul. The trembling in Rosh Hashanah is even on a higher level than the trembling in Rosh Hashanah and Elul. The canal, as we saw a moment before, by my mayor Shacharod, the the shaking of the shayfer that is sounded now is only the lower fear. Shacharod, the the trembling which comes to blowing shayfer is a higher fear. So the question therefore is, Dafa Pekin, nevertheless, the Tzemach Tzedek makes a point of saying that I'm Shachas Hamakib Rosh Hashanah in order to have on the Rosh Hashanah a seder siyem etchov. The light of Makkah, which is that Malakol up Gomem and Masami Enachitainim, because it comes from Makkah, it's the Acharod, the Habo, Mit Kiyat Shefer, the Yellow. It's a trembling that comes Dafke from the Shefer and Elo, not Rosh Hashanah. In other words, if Elo is Yira and Rosh Hashanah is Yira, in fact, Rosh Hashanah is a higher Yira, why do you need Elo to preempt the Makkah, which is brought on Rosh Hashanah? Let the Yira of Rosh Hashanah itself be the basis for bringing on the Makkah. And the answer is because Rosh Hashanah is Yiri Law, and Yiri Law doesn't have what Yiri Tata has. It was going to speak the mile of Yiri Tata over Yiri Law. But you, let me share something with you. This is in Lakut I think, in Chelek Zayin, in Pashas Bahar, and it's in Samach Vov. It's in Samach Vov. It's in Samach Vov. In the first moment of Achoydesh, yeah? He's talking about Yiri Law and Yiri Tata. So the Rebbe Rasha, I mean, the, who is the prototype for Yire Tato? David HaMelech. Who is the prototype for Yire Law? Rabbi Shimba Yechoy, Yisab HaTzadik, yeah? So the Rebbe Rasha says, David HaMelech was a broken man. Rabbi Shimba Yechoy was a no simna b'yalmo, he was so one with the Eivish there, b'chatzire, iskatana, b'yachidna, b'lhitna, b'yisachtas. It's hard to even understand the, the terms that denote how Dovok, Rabbi Shem Yechai would Eivish there. So the Rebbe Rashab said, but one thing you cannot say, Rabbi Shem Ben Yechai had the Hisrei Mimus. His life was rich. No one is going to say that Rabbi Shem Yechai had a Shachas to the Indian of Yesh, of self. But the brokenness that Dovok HaMalach has, he didn't have. There was a richness about his life. And safe call safe, in the final analysis, the brokenness of Dovok has something that nothing else has. Primarily because it's entirely from him. It's not from a, a light. David HaMelech by himself, in himself is broken. And you know, when you read the Tanakh and you see how much the Abish to favor David HaMelech, in my humble opinion, is because of this incredible Lev Nishbor, this broken heartedness which David HaMelech possessed. And that's what the Rebbe is going to talk to here in the Mile of Yireh Tato over Yireh Let's read it inside. Says the Rebbe of Yuvan to explain this, Beheg, maybe let's preface first, Pazed, the fact, Shayid, or the El, is Yire Tato, the fear of El is the lower fear. Vayid, or the Rosh Hashanah, is Yire Law, the fear of Rosh Hashanah is the higher fear. The Hine, the Rebbe now makes a proposal. Achi, look, when Yire Tato, the Yire Law, who? The difference between the lower fear and the higher fear is Kimavur, but like it says in Tanya chapter 43. 
Ja? Ubekam or Makemis, it's found in other places in Hasidus that talk about the two different fears. And they say the following. The lower fear comes from contemplating Hashem in as much as a creator. Or to say it in other words, the lower fear is based on Seich. The human mind understands creation, the world, and it understands that there's a creator, Hashem, who's created this world. And the Hezbollah is the contemplation in the world, and by extension. And its creator makes a person be awed by that creator. And the Rebbe calls it bitl shebeyide zu hu bitl ayesh. It's bitl the bitl ayesh. Now it's interesting a little bit here. It's a little ironic. Because we're talking here about Hezbollah sikhlis, an intellectual contemplation, which is bringing to Yire Tata. But the effect of the contemplation is uh, there's a world. God's the creator. And I'm submitting my yesh to him. No more. However, Yiri Law, the higher fear is Migdullah Sivir and Musi is Barak. It's by contemplating. Again, this also Tanya Perek Mamimo. The greatness and exaltedness of Akadish Barak, who shall a Mailam Elam, which is above the world. And Yiri Law, you're thinking about Hashem without world. The Kulak make a shift that the worlds are nothing compared to Him. Now, of course, this is interesting because a human being cannot understand something he doesn't know. And in this case, when you're thinking about Hashem, and the whole point is, the world to Hashem is nothing, and therefore Hashem is more than world. You're contemplating Hashem that you have no reference for. There's no way for you to know it. So of course, it's explained in Hasid is the only way to have Yireh law is to have that knowledge from inside, from the Neshama. In other words, Yireh Tata is from the mind. Yireh law may be motivated through his bondness, through a contemplation, but it actually comes from the soul. It's a much higher Yireh. Okay, let's read. Shabitl the Yira Zu, the bitl that comes from this fear. Contemplating Hashem that's above the world is bitl be It's a bitl in one's form completely. Vezehu, and this is the Pshat. Shebechdei lov, aliri lov. One is to reach the higher fear. Hudav, kaidegi, loyimul mailad requires help from on high. Ki, because there shall be cheiles hadim lahasig. The only thing that a human being is able to intellectually comprehend. Ayadei, his bondness to his learning and contemplating is ha'olakul, shabbat ha'elam, his godliness, which is relative to the world, close to the world. If one is to feel and understand godliness, which is part of the reimamus, the exaltedness of Einsef Shalom ha'elam, ha'elam, which is above the world, who dafkai de gilo yomayla, Hashem has to give it. So, in other words, there's two differences between Yirat Hato and Yirat Law. The obvious difference between Yirat Hato and Yirat Law. Is Yirat Ata is motivated by thinking about Hashem through the world. Yirat Law is motivated by thinking about Hashem that's higher than the world. But the other difference is that Yirat Ata is self-achieved. A human being can unilaterally bring himself to Yirat Ata. Why? Because all one does in Yirat Ata is study the world. You can do that by yourself. All one does is study the world and deduce that there's a creator, and then study the creator based on his creation, based on his world, and extract an emotion that's a response to that intellect. So, Yireh Tata, you can do entirely by yourself. Yireh Law is not just, I'm thinking about Hashem on a higher level, I'm thinking about Hashem on a level that I can't have myself without a Gilim or Maila. So it turns out Yireh Law is different than Yireh Tata in two ways. It's not only what I'm thinking about, but whether I'm able to achieve it by myself, or I need help from above. In this Maimir, what is self-achieved in Kav Hayira has the property of Bittl, which exceeds, which is greater than what one achieves with the help from on high, because you're being helped. And of course, that's the point. Yira Tata is lower, but in one real way, deeper and more serious than Yira Law, and that's the message of the Maimir. Let's continue to read. Zeo Masha says in the Postak, and it's brought in Tanya, and it's, it's strange to me that in footnote 20, they're not Mitzayin to Tanya, Saif Perich of Gimel. The Yatzavein, who had the Shem Lazar, is called the Chukamel the Abish, who gave us all the mitzvahs, Liyiris Hashem, that have come to Yiri Law. It says in Chesidis, it's brought in the footnotes that says, Yiris Es Hashem, and Yiru Me Hashem. 
Yiru Me Hashem is Yira Tato, Yiru Es Hashem is Yira Yila. And it says, in order to come to Yira Es Hashem, you have to have Tayyir and Mitzvahs. Shevachdei, Lava La Yira, Havaya Yira Yila. If you want to come to the level of the higher fear, EF, Shelava La Zadeh, is Bodhanis, you can't come to it on your own through your own contemplation. Hashem has to inspire the higher fear and what is the medium for Hashem to inspire this higher fear. So in this moment, everything is backwards. How so? Normally we presume that when Hashem gives us a gift, it's greater than what we can achieve on our own. In this moment, what we're able to achieve on our own is going to always have an advantage over something which we're given from above. Yiretato is intellect alone that a person can achieve on his own, a level of bitl ayesh, and we therefore see in that bitl ayesh an advantage over yire law or a bitl of because that Hashem helps us with. Says the Rebbe, when this is the pshach, ayir or the elo, the fear of elo is yire tato, the lower yire. Vayir, the reish hashan is yire law, the yire roshan is a higher fear. Why? So he mentions a number of points, right? One of them is, first of all, Kiba'el Hamelach Basada. In El, the king is in the field. So long as the king is in the field, his greatness and his exaltedness is not so felt, it's not so evident. So when the king is out in the field, and as the Rebbe said in the previous year, the king is out in the field, one of the critical components of that marshal is the choice to approach him, which is unilateral. It comes from the Anche Ha'ir, the Anche Sada, on their own. It's not from Hashem. The king is not reeling the people in. The king is in the field, dressed like a field person. He's not compelling or coercing the people to come over to him. They choose to come over to him. And that choice to come over to him, the Rebbe said in footnote 11, is le'edir esakabol ha'sel ma'ach ha'shamayim. It rouses bitl. So it's not with that gilim or my law, it's Ella Yadei Avedis Adam. It's entirely from the purse. It says the Rebbe Lachain Azayir, Yir, it has a lower Yir. A lower Yir means it doesn't have a light, doesn't have a richness, doesn't have a transcendence, doesn't have a Hisrenimus, but it has a bit. Oh, but Rosh Hashanah, as opposed to Rosh Hashanah, Kishamel, Achob Hechem, of course, the king is in his palace. Sha'oz, Nirga Sharem, and Mosheleh, that in the palace you feel the awesome presence. Of the king that is exalted and separated from the people. And this means that in Rosh Hashanah, Hashem gives of himself to us to inspire the Yirei law. The Benim Shal Hu Gilu Yareimus Dein Seif. Hashem reveals the exaltedness of the Ein Seif Shalom Ailam Eilam, which is higher from the world, as a means of arousing Hayir Shabere Shashana, which is Yirei law. So Shana is much higher than Elo. But Rosh Hashanah is not achievable by oneself without the help of Hashem. In other words, when you learn in Hasidus about the Ebishter, and then you learn in Hasidus, they're supposed to do his bondness about the Ebishter. There's a line. What's the line? The line is things that we can fully understand by ourselves because they're part of world. And on the other side of that line are things which we cannot fully understand by ourselves because they're not part of the world, they're part of a lakus. And Hasidus will say the only reason we're able to understand them is because we have a neshama, and the neshama is one with a lakus, and the neshama has all levels. So we understand these higher levels because we have them inside of us. That the Rebbe calls Gili Mamaila. The lower things, which we're able to understand fully, even though they're lower, affects a unilateral submission. I'm giving myself to Him. The higher ideas, because my ability to understand them, let alone feel them, is only possible because I have support and assistance from him. So even though it's a much higher level, it doesn't have this property of being unilateral bit. And that's the mile of Yire Tato over Yire Elo. So, so far, what did the Rebbe say? That Yire Tato is Melech Basada, there's no Gilim or Milo, and Yire Elo is Melech Be'echa Mechus, is Gilim. The Rebbe continues now, Vyesh In addition, this is an interesting word. When we blow Shefa and Hashanah, to come to the higher fear, says the Rebbe Af Shaz Huzman his Gaz Mechosi his Baruch. Why do you have to blow Shefa? Is not a time of Yiri Law? Says the Rebbe. The reason is because Shabazman the Rosh Hashanah mitadatz me, the time of Rosh Hashanah, which by itself arouses Yiri Law. It's Meir begili haremus deirin safe. It reveals. The exaltedness of the Ein Seif, which is which is above the world, 
but other shaykhs to the worlds. Why? Because it's connected to time. Rosh is one day. And Zman, whom we give Zman, time, has to do with the world. Turn the page. Turn the page. Reish Tamboth. The Lachain, therefore. When on Rosh Hashanah, the revelation of Ain Seif, which is higher than the world, because of the time alone, says the Rebbe, it's Shaykh Le'ela, but it's still connected to the world. To reveal godliness, which is altogether removed from the world, to elicit the Yiri law, it's by Shoifer. Why? Because it's a mitzvah. So the Rebbe is almost saying that there's, there's two in Yanam and Rosh Hashanah. There's the Yiri law because of the Zman of Rosh Hashanah, and there's the Yiri law because of the Mitzvah of Shefer. The Yiri law of the Zman of Rosh Hashanah is higher than the world, but because it's connected to time and the Shaykh to the world indirectly. And the Yiri law of Mitzvah of Shefer, because it's a command from Hashem, is totally above the world. Now you may be familiar, we've talked about this, with the Rebbe's classic Sikhe. In the Dalat for the Yamam Neiroyim, and there's also the Maimorim, that the Rebbe spoke in Tafshin Chav Gimel, which is the same theme, and we learned that entire Hemshech here in these Shiurim, years ago, last year, two years ago, whatever it is, that there's three levels to Tkiyah Shefer. Ha? Huh? There's the Mitzvah Tkiyah Shefer, there's the Tshuva of Tkiyah Shefer, and there's the Inyan Atzmi of Tom Dechuni Aleichem of Tkiyah Shefer. And the Rebbe said something about Yom Kippur. There's the Mitzvah of Yom Kippur, there's the Tshuva of Yom Kippur, and there's the Tshuva Shei Mechapen of Yom Kippur. And the Rebbe says a similar thing when you get to Sukkot, Ho Ezrach, based on Sukkot, the Shaft is Bnei Yisrael, called Ezrach, but you saw Yeshua, Sukkot is also three in Yonim. But in that, Sugi, the lowest of the three is Mitzvahs. In this Maimir, the highest of the three is Mitzvahs, because a Mitzvah means a commandment. Hashem gave it to us. And this is the second point. The first point is that the year of Elul is without a Gilei Momayla. And the year of Rosh Hashanah is with a Gilei Momayla. And the second point is the year of El comes from Shefer, which is not a mitzvah. And the year of Rosh Hashanah comes from Shefer, which is a mitzvah. And these two points, that the Rosh Hashanah, there's a Gilim al Maila. So says this is higher than this man, and the Shaykh is this man. And Rosh Hashanah, we blow Shefer because it's a mitzvah, which is altogether higher than this man, elicits a year a law which we cannot get on our own. Hashem must have given it to us. But in this Maimir, the fact that we cannot get it on our own, and Hashem has to give it to us, is a chasar. And the year of Elul, which is Melech Basad, there's no Gilim Umar. And it's not a mitzvah, which is a unilateral, his battle from below, in this Maimir is advantageous. Let's continue to read. Three lines. From the top of page Reish Tamach Bav, a kivan shet ki a shefer b'reish hashanas who mitzvah. Whereas, in as much as the blowing shefer hashanas a mitzvah, so a yira v'acharada mekel a shefer the yira rosh hashanah. It's true that the awe and the fear from the sound of rosh hashanah the shefer is take yira bittel betachlus the ultimate fear, the ultimate bittel, the madreig of yira law. But yira mitzvah ve'isa. But there's a gila mumay. As opposed to an Elul. And the Rebbe continues, Val Pisa Yesh Lahis of Eid Beer. This explains further. Bazed, the fact, Shahid, Rahabal, Mikaela, Shafer, the Elul, the fear that one arouses and blowing Shafer and Elul is Rak Yirah, does only a lower Yirah. Kizesh, Shakela, Shafer, the Rosh Hashanah, Mevil Yirah, Tsuma, Kazu. The only reason when we, when we blow Shafer, Rosh Hashanah, brings us higher fear. The Madrego Bittel Bemitzias, or Yere Law, is Mitzat Mitzvah. We were commanded to blow Shaif. And because it's a Mitzvah, Hashem gives us the Yere Law. For Kivan, just Kia Shaif, but Elul ain't a Mitzvah. And blowing Shaif and Elul is not a Mitzvah. And therefore, when Mavarchem Alzea Shekadishon of Mitzvah, so, says the Rebbe Lachena Yira, the Habitl, the fear and the Bittel. Habamikala Shaif at El, which comes to the Shaif of Elul, is only Bittel Hayesh. I'm giving away my ego to Hashem. I'm not giving away my whole form to Hashem. Yirat Atah. And Rosh Hashanah, because it's coming from above, both in terms of the Zman of Agili, of Melech Beich HaMuchos, and in terms of the Mitzvah, which is an Indian Atzmi, we come to Yiri Law and to Bittal B'Metzias. He says, Dereb Afa Pekei, nevertheless, Yirizu, the lower fear, and the Bittal, lower Bittal Ayesh of Elul, is Hagdama. The 
the lower fear and the lower bittel is that introduction and a preparation for the higher fear and the higher bittel of Rosh Hashanah. Why? Key. To come to the higher fear. You have to first the lower fear. And again, as you know, as I've told you, it's because there is an advantage of Yire Tato over Yire Law, which you're going to see later. Okay? And the advantage of Yire Tato over Yire Law is basically because it's total his battles without any Gilim or Mayu. The Rebbe continues to pay the Kevihine. Yodua, it is known. And the Rebbe now goes back to the Moshal of Melech Basad a little bit. The only way to go from the lower fear to the higher fear is to have love in between. The lower fear is personal submission. The higher fear is the experience of standing in front of the king. And the, his battle, so that effect between this year and this year, this Ahava. The say that Avaidah, the sequence of Avaidah is, Notice there's no footnote, there's no number, and there's no Maramakim, but I'm almost certain that it's a Zayah. Which of course is explained in Hasidus why the lowest av uh, uh, madrege is yira, and the highest madrege is also yira, and between the two yiras you have the two avas. So the Rebbe Dachil Shein, the first fear is yira tato is a lower fear, which is the fear of being punished, the fear of being separate. It's really the fear of submission. Well, the then comes two levels of love, which are called avazuta avaraba, lower love. A smaller love and a greater love. And of course, these two Ahavis are also discussed in Tanya Perik Mem Gimel Bekisir. The second half Perik Mem Gimel. Well, the Acher is there, then afterwards comes the Chilu, which is Yireh Elo. So first there's a lower Yira, then there are two Ahavis in between, and then there's a higher Yira. So the Rebbe, we say, move, which explains, is there, the Elo. If from the lower fear, which happens in Elo, we come to the higher fear. Rosh Hashanah is Ayegdei Hagdama Sa'av. It has to be love in between. No. So in Elul this year, Rosh Hashanah this year, what's the Av in between? And the answer is Malach Basada. You see? The year before is Yetzim Lahak Bil Pona Basada, the decision to go meet the king in the field. And after the people make the decision to go to meet the king in the field, which the Friya Dei Rebbe called in footnote 11, Le'edin Asakabola Seyel Macho Shamayim, then the king is Makabu Kulam, Beseve Ponam Yofis, Umar Ponam Sheikh, a case Lukulam, which is the king arousing love by loving us. And then the Shoshana is here alone. Vyesh Lavayez and the Pshat, the Pima, the Kosta Bukutate, going through the details in the Moshal of Melach Basad and Lukutate. Kishamel, Chubasad, when the king is in the field. So I'm going to repeat again. The first thing that happens, the people choose to go to him. That's Yerat Atah. And the second thing that happened is, who Makabal is cool, and we upon him, your face, he greets everybody with a pleasant countenance. And then it says, who mad upon him, Sheikh Akes Lakulam, he laughs and smiles to all of the people. Says the Rebbe, upon him, your face. Upon him, Sheikh Akes is Ahava. A radiant face is a symptom of love, but there's two levels in the radiant face. There's a radiant face and there's a laughing face. When the king greets them all with a countenance which is, which is of a, a pleasant dis, di, disposition, demeanor. He actually displays a laughing and smiling face to the kulam. It raises in the people. Love to the king. That breaks it down like this. He says the following. That when you analyze the marshal of the kutateira, mirumazim, dalad, now you have the four points that we just listed. Number one, ze, shayetsim, likras, hamel, lechalkab, uponov, shayach, yiratata. Going to greet the king, the unilateral decision of the people to go to greet the king, this is no inspiration from above. This is just their bitl. This is yiratata. Well, akhir is that, then it says, hamel, lechalkab, upasay, uponov, yafis, umara, lehem, uponov, Sheikh case. First he greets them with a pleasant face and then he greets them with a laughing face. Says the Rebbe, this is Shtei Hamadregez Derechim, or two levels of love. Ponem Yafis Avazuta, Ponem Sheikh Akes Avarab. A beautiful face is the lower love, a laughing face is the higher love. We've had a conversation recently about what laughter means, we're going to leave it alone. And then comes Avar. Then he comes to the palace, Yerilah. So going to the king, which is done entirely by the people, this is Yiratatah, 
the king showing love, this is Avazut and Avarabah, meeting the king in the palace and being totally quieted, stunned by the profound presence of the king in that palace and the awe that it elicited, this is Yerilo. So the Rebbe says, Vehine, here we get to the point. Af, it's true, the Pashtas. Sheba Adar gives the Yira. When you talk about the grades of Yira, Ha Yira de Elul is Lemata, Maya Yira de Reish Hashana, the awe and fear of Elul is lower than the awe and fear of Rosh Hashana, because Ha Yira de Elul is Yira Tata, Va Yira de Reish Hashana is Yira Hila. Elul is only the lower fear, and Rosh Hashana is the higher fear. And we know that there's two differences between the lower fear and the higher fear. One is that the higher fear comes from, uh, comes from a higher meditation. And the other is that it comes from help that comes from on high. And the Yerat Tata doesn't have that help, says the Rebbe, Mikom, um, nevertheless, Yeshmai Lebe Yerat De El Al Yerat Rosh Hashan. Here's the point. That there's an advantage of Yerat of El, Yerat Tata of Yerat Allah. What's that? My Labit. Unilateral submission to Hashem. Ki. Hayir of Abitl de Rosh Hashan, or the awe and Bitl of Rosh Hashan, we have two motivations for it. One of them is it's the time of the revelation, and the other is that it's a mitzvah. And both of them come from Hashem. Ki. Hayir of Abitl, Shib Rosh Hashan, the fear and Bitl of Rosh Hashan, Ki, Venge Azuzman, is Galus, Malchuse, is Barech. At that time, Hashem reveals himself. And I'm adding, and he gave us a commandment to blow Shaifer. Hayir of Abitl, Oh, Zainam Chidish. To have awe of our Kaddish Baruch, when Hashem reveals himself to you, to have awe of our Kaddish Baruch, when Hashem commands you to blow Shafir, is self understood. There's no Chidish, it's not Nav. The Kiv and Shakul, Lak Mekal Akashiv, in presence of our Kaddish Baruch, everybody is nothing. And of course, it says in Tani Kol, Shaitaka Meyesikala, the closer one is to our Kaddish Baruch, the one bittle one has. It says the Rebbe, Harizesha Yisrael, when a Yid is standing, be bittle, the Yid Elah, in the higher level of bittle. But being there has to do with a revelation from on high. Number one, has man de Rosh Hashanah. It's the time of Rosh Hashanah. They're in the palace of the king and Hashem is revealed to them. That's number one. And then there's number two, which I'm adding again, which is the mitzvah blowing, Shefer, which brings to the law, says the Rebbe, Ein Chiddush. It's not now. Why? Because to the Abish, there is something which is novel is not something which is great. To the Abish, there's something which is novel, or something which is a surprise. Right? You all know, I've told you this mushal always, all the time. It's a footnote 31. The mushal from the Tzipar Amadaberes, the Papagai. Yeah? It actually says in Chzidus, Hanik the Papagai. The, the mushal is a guy is uh, working for the king, a fellow is working for the king, and the king has a change of heart. He turns against him. He does something wrong, and the king refuses to forgive him, and so forth. So he tries to apologize, and he goes to the king. The king doesn't want to hear. He goes to the to the chief of staff and he goes to the minister of the interior and nobody, the, the king is turned to deaf ear. Anyway, when he runs out of means of appealing to the king, he comes up with a plan. He goes to a pet store, he buys a bird, a parrot, and he rehearses an apology. He puts this bird in a beautiful golden cage and he sends it into the palace anonymously without a, a name, without a return address. It's brought into the king as a gift from an anonymous a gifter. So this beautiful bird sitting in this gorgeous cage is sitting in the king's room. The king is playing with the bird and at one point the bird opens up its mouth and makes the apology. And the king laughs. Of course a human being can make a much better apology than a bird can but you're not expecting a bird to make it. That surprise got the king to laugh. Once the king laughs the ice is broken. He can, he can no longer turn a blind eye, a, a blind eye and he forgives him. It's such chiddush. Something happens that klayochel agave the ebish is a chiddush in the lashon achasidus umervat. You're not expecting it. A great person serving Hashem in a great way is a great service, but it's not a novel chiddush. A simple person serving Hashem in a simple way is a much bigger chiddush than a great person serving Hashem in a great way, because great people are, are involved with great things. Simple people should be involved in nadashkaitin. And he's the servant of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That's a Chiddush. And that's the Yerat HaTah. Let's keep reading. Or Bedugmas HaBitl Sheba Atzilis. For example, Atzilis is bottle. It says, Dereb Eim Bazeh Chiddush. There's nothing novel about it. Why? 
מכיוון שבאצילוס מהגיל אין סוף, of course the tilos is bottle, it's a world of הלקוס. ועל דרך זה באצילוס גופה, more specifically, the bitl of chokma of אצילוס, שבו היא עיקר הביטל, the primary bitl of tilos is in chokma, like it says in the Gersa Kedit, in Tanyan, פרק ל"ה, in the Hago, אין אחד שיש שנת נבל, לפי שבחוכמה הוא הגילוי, דהו לבד דהו, ואין זו לא סי, everybody knows chokma is הוא לבד ואין זו לא סי, אין זו לא סי, which is even higher than in a lich. ומכל שכן ביטל דה כסף, which is even higher, which is called אפס, yes? דאף על גב שהוא ארצח וכולו, even though כסף is a very bright light. In other words, it's saying something, it's revealing something. Ukam who called the Milos Hill, it says, but look, it's dark compared to Hashem. The Pirush Ukam who, the meaning of this blackness is Shah Keser Uba Bittl. That Keser is also a bottle like Hedda Tvises Mokim, Kami Mara Hashoche, like the color black. She'e Negevei Neged Mara Love, which does not, doesn't appear higher than the color white. This is, this has to do with shades and colors and light and optical illusions, as according to Rashi at least, you know, by Tzaras. That the mare alovan is above the natural color of the skin. It actually, says it's a natural phenomena that white will always appear higher than the skin. It appears that not everybody agrees with this. The Rebbe brings the idea that black does not appear higher, and he's learning from this a concept of bittel, and I don't understand it, and there's no makoyres to look up, so we're going to have to just leave it. Says the Rebbe, when you're talking about atzilas, you're talking about chokh, you're talking about kesa, this huge bittel. When everything is said and done, ain't zeh echidosh. There's nothing novel about this. Mikivan shah keser masik, because keser understands. Shu be ain't lech lagabi eid ain't safe. It's it's incomparably less than eid ain't safe. So it's both. So the Rebbe says in the higher worlds, there's huge creations that are deeply involved with Hashem, but chidosh novelty surprise there isn't. So Rosh Hashanah, you have these two. Motivations for Yiddish law. Number one, there's man of Rosh Hashanah. And number two, the mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah. Both of these things makes the Yiddish law of Rosh Hashanah not a novelty. On the other hand, says the Rebbe, I'm on page Reish, Samach Zayin. Seven lines on the top of the page. Vahayir of a bitl the Elbel. On the other hand, the Yir and the bitl of Elu. Kishamel, the Chubasada, the king is in the field. Sha'az, that then the two points we made before backwards. Number one, a Nirgash, Hagadlus, Vaharema Muthshale, the greatness of the king is not felt. He's not revealing himself, there's no Gili. And number two, again, I'm putting words into the Maime, which the Rebbe said before, there's no mitzvah to blow Shafer. It's a volunteer blow. Says the Rebbe, Vafapikain yesh na bitl di Israel, and there's still a bitl. Shemakablim aleya machusay is barach yidin unilaterally, except the kingship of a kadish barachu. Vilaye dela, moreover, shagam taken be shafer, they blow shafer without a mitzvah. Voluntarily, le eider yidin acharada to awaken this awe and this trepidation. Bikte sha malchus, shakavala sa malchus, tia bishtaimis, they're accepting his kingdom. Should be perfect and whole. Says the Rebbe Bittelze is only Bittlayesh. It's lower Bittel. But it's Yaakov made many Hashem. By Hashem, it's incredibly precious. And in footnote 36, he brings the Pshat and the Pasuk. You have in Tilim, yeah? In one of the Kapitel Tilim. Yaakov be'ene adeshem ha mofsa la chasidim. It's precious in the eyes of Hashem when his chasidim are mofsa, die. And it's a very uncomfortable Pasuk in Tilim. We say it all the time in Halo. Yaakov be'ene adeshem mofsa la chasidim. So Hasidus teaches how moth doesn't mean to die, how moth means bitl. To kill the Nefesh of Bahamas. Yaakov, any of the Shem, how moth of Hasidus says the Rebbe, means by Hashem it's most precious, the bitl ayesh of his Hasidim, even more than the bitl of Mitzias of his Hasidim, because of the Chidish of Adamar. You see? So what the Rebbe just did was argue that even though Yiri Allah is so much greater than Yiri Tato, in Yiri Tato you have Chidish. And the to tell you have a unilateral bitl, it's the person by himself, without a gilim or mailim, without a mitzvah. And as much of all this is concerned, there is something about Yire Tata, which is even greater than Yire Allah, which is why Yire Tata is able to set up Yire Allah. Okay, that's the Nikud. And the Rebbe now continues, Yeshleima, on page Reit Samach Zayin, first paragraph, I'm eight lines from the end. So, what's the first thing that happens? The people go out to the king to greet him, yeah? They go out to the king to greet him. When they go out to the king to greet him, huh? When the people go out to the king to greet him, the Fidik Rebbe says that it's it's the absolute bitl, yeah? People go out to the king to greet him, bitl. Then the king loves them as a reaction 
to the Makabal, to the Yetzim Lekrasi Vasada. So the Rebbe now says, People are coming to greet the king in the field. The king in the field came to love them, right? The king in the field came to love them. But the love of the king in the field is now enhanced by what? By the fact that they went to him. So the Rebbe says, The king has another kind of pleasure. For the fact that the people made the unilateral decision by themselves to go and meet the king in the field. To greet his face. So the he's out in the field. It enhances further the phenomena the love which he shows them. Remember, the Rebbe said before that those two loves are enriched by the pleasure that the king gets from the decision of the people to go to the field. We want to add When we say that Elo has an advantage over Rosh Hashanah that in, in Elo we're giving something lower to Hashem but even though it's lower it's more precious it's for two reasons Number one The point you made in the beginning of this painting because it's a surprise. But number two, which is how the Maimah began, Gam binyan abit. The Elul Avoida is entirely the person. So the Bittal is entirely unilaterally. The Bittal, Chai de Agil, even one has Bittal, because Hashem is revealed. Ki von Chai Bittal, since this Bittal is Mepnesha Makir, Umar Gesha Ilud Agiloi, he recognizes and he feels Hashem's revealing himself to him. Shub Eidel Echel Gabe, which is higher than him. And therefore he's bottled, listen to the irony, had a bittle kosher de metzias ha'odah ma'akodah When a person experiences ain safe and it overwhelms him, the being overwhelmed by the experience of ain safe is connected to the person's form. Because you're being overwhelmed, you're being overwhelmed by divine revelation. Alternatively, when you submit on your own, that's not about you. V'amita sinyana bittle, true bittle is ba'aveda da kabola seil, shukumayeve. The, sub, the submission of a slave, which is like a slave, the yoke of the king is upon him, and he's he's forced to accept the will of his master. In that submission, there is no I, there's only master. And in the nimshal, when a yid submits to Hashem as an ever to an Odin, there is no I. So it's all backwards. When you do things by yourself, there's no you. When you do things. With the help from above, it's about you. It's all counterintuitive and upside down. And he explains each point. When you have a relationship from above that humbles you, the humility is in you. But when you submit, the whole meaning of submission is there's no I. So the Rebbe says, remember that when a Yid is mavatl himself to Hashem all by himself, in addition to the Chiddush, which is the point the Rebbe is making here for the first time in Perek Vav, there is the Mailas Habitl, which the Rebbe already started to speak about in the earlier Prakim in Pedic Dalit, that when a Yid gives of himself to Hashem all by himself, the submission is total, the Bittl is total, and the person in effect becomes an extension of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There is no parallel to that when there's a Gilim or Mail. So now the Rebbe says, let me answer the questions. The the, 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 the point of everything we just learned is that the simplest and lowest avoida has the property of Bittl and Kabbalah Sale and Avdos, which makes it higher than any of the higher avoidas. And on this basis, the Rebbe wants to explain why Elul comes before Rosh Hashanah. Because actually, the Bittl of Elul is higher in a certain aspect than anything which is going to come later, and it's therefore properly able to set it up. Let's read it inside. But we now can answer the question that Semach Tzedek asked. That we said that there's two reasons why you blow Shefer and El before Rosh Hashanah. Number one, because El is a Yerit Atah, which sets up Yerit Law. Number two, because Rosh Hashanah is Gili HaMakif, and you have to have Bittl before to set up a Gili HaMakif. And the question was, why can't you have the Yerit Atah in Rosh Hashanah itself? The answer is this. Bring it on the Makar Rosh Hashanah is be ikir ada yira va'acharoda. Boy, that kishayif be'el is primarily achieved through the bittel of el. 
When a person has bitl, who I'm sure has a makif bias, he brings down makif, it's be'ikir, it's primarily kishacharad, do be'if, and the bitl of a shiflis. When there's trepidation, that's a bitl. And a sense of lowliness, onir nechaliruach, a poor and a broken spirit. Wokabavu, erba maimer, let's explain in the maimer. The chol shoha odom mashbul asats meyes, the more a person lowers himself. Hamakif hanim shach, humi makif elyon yes, the higher the makif is going to be. And it's not about Hashem's revelation, it's about the person's submission. Therefore, the whole idea of bringing down higher levels of Gilu from on high. Reish Hashanah is Aidayir of Acharad El, so the fear and trepidation of El. Even though El is lower than Rosh Hashanah, but there's one thing El has that Rosh Hashanah doesn't have, which is a brokenness and no help. It's entirely the person. A person feels great revelation. And therefore, the shiflus, the experience of this bitl is not humbling the person. In fact, it enriches the person. When, it, when a person is in a state of being impoverished with a broken spirit, the shiflus, the bitl is in the way of shiflus. This brings the person far closer to the king. This is Hayir of Acharoda the Yellow. So, in an ironic way, El is the lowest Avoida. But as the Rebbe said in the Maimed, it reaches Atmus. And because El, which is lowest Avoida, reaches Atmus, it's able to set up the Gilui, all the Avoidas which are higher than itself. Biyashlai said, Oid Biyat at another point, Bamai Lashabe Hayir the El. Allah Yed Rosh Hashanah, another advantage in the Bittl of El Bil Rosh Hashanah. The Kivan Shahayir of our Bittl, the El Boy, they have the Sub Shah Yisrael and Yilad Edi. The approaching the king in the field is in unilaterally the person. Now you must understand that in so many Mamari Hasidis, they say that the Anila Doidi is a reaction to the Malach Basada. The king comes to the field and we have an Anila Doidi. Here we're saying differently. The Anila Doidi is sets up the Malach Basada. The decision to go greet the king is before the Malach Basada. Says the Rebbe Shasherish the Israel Luba Atmos. You didn't come from Atmos. Therefore, I'm Shachash the Yiro Bitlzer. The what we bring down through this year is I'm Shachash the Atmos. The Atmos itself. This is another point. If you remember in the previous year, I gave you a long introduction. That there's two points in the mile of the Bittel of Elul. Number one, the Bittel. And number two, that Bachshaft and Shaisol called Malachal Davar. That's what he's speaking to here. That because Yidna had the highest source, so first of all, because it's a unilateral bitl, it reaches Atmos. And second of all, because Yidna Mishush and Atmos, it reaches Atmos. And for both of these reasons, the Yidna Tata of Elul has an aspect of being above all the higher avoidus, which are going to follow it later on. This is the deeper reason. From the year to of Elo, boy, Achakach, but Rosh Hashanah the year Elo, you can't Rosh Hashanah the year Elo. Kaide year of the Elo, Hamshachas Atmos. In Elo, you have a year which you're doing entirely by yourself, and in doing entirely by yourself means total submission, and you're revealing the mile of it, which is Mutshish and Atmos. Kaide Zen Hamshachim Achakach Gam Agiluim. This is so weird. Rosh Hashanah is called Giluim, and Elo is called Atmos. Rosh Hashanah is all about Binyan HaMalchus, it's always called Atmos. In this, Maimir, Rosh Hashanah is Giluyim. Yiri Allah is Giluyim. Yiri Tatoa is Atmos. And the Rebbe says, Vina Derev Zagam Binyan HaTshuva. In as much as we did so far, we talked about Yiri, Bitl. Now we talked about Tshuva Tatoa and Tshuva Allah. Same principle. This is going to be an advantage of Tshuva Tatoa over Tshuva Allah. Let's read it. Tzeh Shabel taken by Shefer when he blows Shefer and El. Besides, for the Bittel and all the other things we learned about until now, there's one final point. Kemavul il meyatur bechdei lahazer Yisrael sheyasu tshuva. That even in El there's tshuva, and then Rosh Hashanah is going to be again tshuva, and naturally the tshuva of Rosh Hashanah is going to be tshuva Elah, and the tshuva of El is going to be tshuva Tata. Nevertheless, yesh poze yisrein ala tshuva de Rosh Hashanah. Just like in the Bittl and all the other things we said before, there's an advantage in El of Rosh Hashanah and tshuva the same way. Why? El is tshuva Tata. Rosh Hashanah is tshuva law. What's the difference between tshuva Tata and tshuva law? 
Tshuva Tata is going away from sin. Tshuva Yilah is coming closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the basic difference. So the Rebbe is going to argue that the Tshuva Tata of Elul, going away from sin, is advantageous over the Tshuva Yilah of coming closer to Hashem of Rosh Hashanah. Let's read it inside. Dagam sha tshuva de el is al inyan and built in it so you and el were doing tshuva for avedis. Kemuv and gam may masha kosa bekis fiariz al tazen kabolo that el is the rasha tevis in el yod the vesamti loch el means when mistakes happen. The ore make la tu tikan al yon and built in it so you going to cities of refuge is correction for wrongs. And the idea that el is in el yod the vesamti loch means that Hashem is giving a place to a person who's done things that are wrong to correct them. So we're talking about Avedis. The association between Elo and the idea that a person has done something wrong and he needs to find a place to correct it. Is somebody miklot, is to teach us shakapar, a lot of miklot, the city is a refuge for an accident. From Resh Chedesh, when we do Tshuva, Nasas Dennis Bishgog, Kishgog, it's under Chedesh, all of our Avedis, even those done on purpose, become like accidents, like Shogig. But Tshuva de El, the Sakhish Gog, here the Rebbe makes a distinction between Resh Chedesh, El, and El itself. And by the way, again, here there's no mocker. If you remember earlier in the Maimon, the Rebbe was wondering why he singles out Resh Chedesh, El. Here he says, Resh Chedesh, El is Dennis Nasas Kishgog, and El is Tikkun Hashgog. So there's a parallel between El in the other Samti Loch because it's also a Shege. Let's move on. So El, we're doing Tshuva for Avedis. A lower level. But Tshuva, the Reish Hashana Shabola Achare. The Tshuva, Rosh Hashana falls after El. Shekshenit, Kinu Kfar, one has already corrected and repaired Don Yadam ability to show him all those undesirable things of El, Gam, Hashgog, it's even the accident, I did Tshuva, the El, to the Tshuva of El, therefore when Rosh Hashanah becomes, he be Iker Tshuva Yilah. So again, Tshuva Tata is lower, Tshuva Yilah is higher. And the difference between Tshuva Tata and Tshuva Yilah, it's not just, first of all, obviously Tshuva Tata is less intense, and Tshuva Yilah is more intense, but Tshuva Tata is about sin, and Tshuva Yilah is about God. So the Rebbe says, Mikomakim, same Mikomakim as before, Yesh Yisrein, Ba Tshuva, the El, after all, the tshuva and Elul has an aspect which makes it higher than the tshuva Rosh Hashanah. How so? Rosh Hashanah's Rosh Hashanah's tshuva has to do with the mitzvah of Shefer. Now the ikir of Shefer is a mitzvah is separate from the tshuva. The tshuva is only a remez. But the simple fact that the mitzvah of tshuva has a remez for tkiyah Shefer at least indirectly associates with the mitzvah. Which cost of a Rambam, this famous Rambam that Afa Pishat Kiyah Shefer, but Rosh Hashanah is a cost of Remez Yeshbei. Blowing Shefer Rosh Hashanah is a mitzvah which has to do simply because Hashem said it has a hint, and the hint is Uru Yisheinim Mishinaschem Vechulu Vechizru B'Shuv. The famous Rambam Dutcho. Vagam Shinin Atshuva Meru with the Shefer Ula Ma'ilam Mez Mitzvah the Kiyah Shefer. The Shefer is only a mitzvah, and the Tshuva is even higher. We can do a Binyan Remez because we know a rule about the idea of Remez. Shain Yin Hamerum is all a mile of me. Adavish Hameram is a love. When you have a Remez, it's above the thing which it's alluding to. Vach Shain Yim Mislavish Bahadavar who it can't be revealed in that thing like a Remez Lavat. So Tshuva Rosh Hashanah is only a Remez and Shefer. Mekomah Kam Nevertheless. The fact that the Shefer, the mitzvah of Shefer, is at least a hint for this idea. There's some corollary between the mitzvah of Shefer and the tshuva of Shefer. The kivin the Rosh Hashanah, the Shefer, the Rosh Hashanah is a mitzvah, and Rosh Hashanah Shefer is a mitzvah. Lachen gama tshuva and the mezes blo. Yesh l'shaychas laveda the teiro mitzvahs and teiro mitzvahs is a lower avoda, even mitzvah Shefer. The ikir hamayla the tshuva. The true idea of tshuva is when it's not a mitzvah, it's totally unilaterally. He magia babal aratzim, which reaches Hashem, which is higher than the will of ten and mitzvahs. L'may l'may aratzim the mitzvahs, and this is the tshuva of Elul, top of page eight, samach tes. Now, because the tshuva magia l'may l'may aratzim the mitzvahs, the tshuva of Elul reaches above mitzvahs altogether, because Yisrael kadmo l'teira yid never higher source than the teira. V'lachein l'may l'may the tshuva b'ikik tshuva b'omi other mitzvah atzmei, which is tshuva of Elul nil So therefore. The tshuva of Elul comes entirely from the person, not from a mitzvah of Hashem. And since the tshuva of Elul comes entirely from a person, not from the mitzvah of Hashem, the tshuva of Elul comes from Etzim, because Yidin comes from Etzim. So same principle again. The higher tshuva is a higher union. And it's written in the Torah. It's a mitzvah in the Torah, or at least the Rem is from a mitzvah in the Torah. 
And the lower tshuva, Yid does by himself. And what a Yid does by himself reveals the idea that a Yid has a higher source than Tehid and Mitzvahs. And therefore the tshuva has a higher source than the tshuva which is written in the Tehid. This is the Maimir. And I mean, when you cut to the chase, I mean, this is a consummate example. If whatever day of the year it is, the Rebbe is going to show that it's the greatest. I'm sure that when Rosh Hashanah comes, the Rebbe will show you how there's nothing greater than Rosh Hashanah. But in El, the Rebbe puts El on a pedestal, even above the Avaida of the Yom and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And in Mitzvah Hashem, we're hoping this El to do the other Mugadik Anila Deidi from Tafshin Chavav, Belin Edeh, with Hashem's help.